some change has to be done in the library world, so. Sort of this mad, uh, stupid, even kind of idiotic thing to do. And we didn't know exactly what it was uh, coming to be. The point was to take 100 librarians from Copenhagen to Berlin and have a smashing conference at the same time. That was the point. This is my bike, a charge plug, uh, single speed fixed gear bicycle. And this is going to take me to Berlin. Really, I'm glad for this event. Uh, it's going to be the, the greatest event of all. And I feel, feel, feel sorry for the ones not attending. The first days uh, were quite hectic. On Friday, the day before we started, we, we went for a shorter ride with uh, Masse and Patrick from Boston to just, you know, try to localize how we can get out of Copenhagen. And like I said, we had seen the route earlier with a car, but uh, it, it's different when you have your own bike and you need to kind of see where's the traffic lights, how, you know, do we take a left from here or right, or kind of orient yourself. So on 27th we did that. I navigated through Cyclone for Library, so I wanted to make sure that we get out of the urban area well and kind of wanted to kind of orient myself to cycling and reading the map and so forth. It was a good thing that we did that because uh, otherwise we would have been very late uh, on Saturday because it was not that easy to get out of Copenhagen. My name is Jukka Pennanen and I come from uh, Helsinki, uh, from the National Library of Finland. Uh, it's a very busy time at the moment, yes. Well, it started about a year ago uh, in Turku when I met Kai Haltunen who uh, had plans to go by bike from Copenhagen to Berlin by himself. Last year, when we started to do this with uh, the colleagues from Helsinki, it appeared to be quite possible. People liked it very much, so uh, we went on planning it. I heard about it uh, maybe a few weeks before the IFLA conference in Gothenburg. I don't actually know why and how I got involved. And that's sort of like the best thing about this project. There's no structure about it. At first I didn't quite know how to combine the two things, cycling and, and libraries, and it sounded more like, like something that, that actually could uh, be something big. We had to wake up real early and, and uh, start the planning and, and uh, taking everything to to the Black Diamond. So we are heading to to, to Greve and to to Guye in the in the evening. The way I see it, this is a like a pop-up temporary think tank of librarians, and yeah, we will solve some of the hardest problems in the library world. I'm from uh, the Minneapolis-St. Paul and I do a lot of cycling. I'm an avid cyclist and when I saw this I just said I've got to do it. <laughs> we were lucky and, and people liked the idea of this kind of endeavor to uh, advocate libraries and to market the work they do in this uh, new way. While the, the service crew will have this uh, kind of orange safety vests so, if you have any troubles, try to contact us. So, good luck, everybody. They were enthusiastic about it, but, but still quite uncertain of what's going to happen. It was a very good starting point for the whole event.
have been uh, riding uh, how many kilometers? About 40. Now it's raining. We are also seeing the open library of Thune. What, what is it like and uh, what's the concept of open library? The start was quite uh, heavy for uh, them to cycle uh, 70 kilometers in, in rain. They were cold. I think they were hungry. A bit angry too, I think. I think we had seven punctures the first day. And it gets on your morale when you're soaked and you puncture and you don't know where everybody is and you know, you're out of radio range. And... <laughs> it was a long day, my feet are very cold. This was the longest I've ever ridden in my whole entire life. <laughs> I think at that point that people realize they have to give up something for this. They can't expect any luxury. So you kind of get a little bit, little bit worried. Oh, what's going to be, you know, it's going to be like this for nine days. It hurts. A lot of rain. That's all I have to say. People had to sleep on the floor. So this again, a perfect way to start the whole event because somehow I felt that this could only get better. Yeah, the route we are taking is um, uh, in Denmark, it's number nine. So make sure you stick to that. And uh, especially on a day like this with our theme, it's very important for us to stay as a group. So the people who are running up, up front, make sure that you won't go as fast as you want to. Because this is a group effort. So for example yesterday we had people about five kilometers behind us. And that doesn't work. That, that sends a message that, okay, here's a bunch of librarians and they don't take care of each other. And not like, okay, there's a bunch of librarians and they will ride as a group. Oh, what am I expecting for the day? I'm expecting to do a little singing and dancing on wheels. Another day riding, should be fun. Food's delicious, people are great. I'm hoping there's a little less rain tonight, but who cares, at least we get a coffee break. Yeah! <laughs> coffee! One day, cycling tour is quite normal, but the second day, maybe people realize that we're going to do this. We're actually going to Berlin. This is actually happening. So, yeah. It was probably sort of an eye-opener day two, yeah. We sticked as a group and, and in a way I'm happy that we got so many punctures and so much rain on the first day because I think that was very good for group dynamics. The second day we rode to Preste and got a little bit rain there too, but, but for example the kind of professional discussions really started going from there. And the first thing which, are going, which we are going to discuss tonight is the library service to the immigrants in your countries. The structure of Cycling for Libraries is to have a theme for each day, like a discussion theme. That didn't really work out because on some days we just didn't have the chance or, or kind of discussions kind of evolved to something else. That's fine. It's an unconference, so if you're totally like control crazy, Person, you can't do an unconference. You need to be able to kind of be flexible and let things flow. Uh, we're in a library in Presto, an open library they called it. Means you can get in with your barcode and your PIN number when there's no staff. It's open late hours. I think that's really cool. Yeah, my my task was to, to ride behind and if something happens then, you know, patch people up and, and uh, take care of them. But, but also if somebody had a flat tire or something, and, because uh, we, we didn't want to leave anybody behind. It was fun. That bridge was amazing. Oh, and oh, oh okay. and oh. <laughs> Julia and Rasmus oh. uh, collided. I need to get some ice for my ankle now. Uh, but it's not so so dangerous. She's uh, back with us. I'm fine. I shall remember this interesting story a long time. Well, one of my duties was to to take care of first aid uh, because I used to work as as a paramedic in my previous life. We had a really nice five to ten kilometers with a strong backwind. I think that was the first time when we got to. In a way, do that kind of a road cycling trance because uh, there was traffic, so we couldn't ride next to each other and couldn't chat. So we rode in one line, 
and uh, basically all you can do is bicycle with a back wind. We picked up some speed and, and beautiful. Yeah, so we're taking a ferry and then we're taking a bus. Um, and, I, and, and like, if this, if every day is this sunny, I'm gonna be the happiest man alive. So it's it's been beautiful. The, you know, the sun was shining, enjoying one beer after those few hard days of rain and and some physical exhaustion, I guess as well. So, so yeah, and I think. At some point there, uh, people started bonding. <laughs> At the camping site, we, we did have the tent for the first time. Perhaps it's the first library tent in the world, though it's not the first library circus in the world, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I thought that was great. <laughs> yeah, it's a circus, and I, I imagine a big tent made from all flags of the world and, and libraries in there discussing things. Oh. From the beginning it was clear that this is an unconference for librarians primarily and secondarily an advocacy program and then perhaps thirdly a cycling tour. We just arrived at the New Chirping uh, main library. We just uh, did about 35 kilometers and that's it for today. Good afternoon everyone. We had a keynote presentation from Buffy Hamilton from USA and then we had some, some time to to actually talk about libraries and, and brainstorm something. Uh, and then everybody produced one post-it sign uh, of uh, how we should develop libraries. And uh, the room is buzzing. It's uh, very, uh, very nice to see and to hear the people uh, talking about this and hear that they are burning for libraries. And I'm very happy about this. Jan Holmquist, I'm not quite sure how, but somehow he had managed to, to get the, the chef from Norma, the Michelin restaurant, to serve us food. The founder of uh, the restaurant who's delivering the food is uh, Klaus Meyer, who, was, uh, who also founded uh, Norma, which is uh, the best restaurant in the world uh, this year and last year. We thought that this would be a kind of a parallel way to show world how we could, as librarians, how we could survive in this uh, world of, uh, of many uh, uh, commercial players. And our trip would be kind of, uh, of uh, simple for, uh, for our survival. I'm, I'm quite happy. I'm quite happy. During the whole trip, every day got better uh, and people were, were you know, seeing the goal and so on. But yeah, it was, it, the food was crazy good. Uh, yeah. Already like half a year ago, yeah. I was aware that I can't make the whole trip. So I'm heading, heading home to, today. Uh, on the other hand, it's nice to see my family tomorrow. Hello, kids. I don't want to even mention that we came from Denmark to Germany. I don't think that's important in the trans-global project. I think we came from uh, New Jerping to Rostock. And then in Rostock we had a pretty nice uh, reception by mayor of Rostock and... 20% of all ways in Rostock used bicycles. There was Rostock TV and newspapers and so on, so... They had organized a police escort on the autobahn. I think Cycling for Libraries worked because, in a way, we provided an intervention in the daily routines of librarians of Rostock. And then, through this small intervention, our local colleagues could contribute. It was some sort of a new, new chapter on the trip. So we were one step closer to Berlin. We were in the right country, at least. Of the Rostock people. <laughs> it's 
thing. Uh, so now we're supposed to take a uh, group picture of everybody just behind us here. This is the Universitätsplatz here in uh, in Rostock. I'm happy that uh, we have uh, local colleagues to ride with us and it's important for them and it's of course very important for us. Yes, this is what Cycling for Libraries is about. We can engage other, our colleagues and give everybody opportunity to ride a bit. Yeah. Day six, we drove from uh, Rostock to Kristrov. It was the first day on German soil. As you know, it's Ascension Day today. Uh, that's, the, that's how the church calls it. The Germans prefer to call it um, Father's Day or Men's Day. So the point of that day, supposedly, is that if you're a man, you get absolutely smashed in the morning and hang out with friends and just have fun. Uh, so it was quite a nice ethnographic um, experience as well, you could say. And um, we had some fun. Yeah, hello, hello. 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 <laughs> With the people on the sides of the roads, um, they were very friendly, very open. They were in a very relaxed mood today because of that holiday. We arrived quite late to the, to the places we are going to overnight. We felt quite clearly that people were, they were a bit stressed. I understand it very well because, because they were tired. My name is Anki and today is my birthday. So I'm actually celebrating my birthday on the saddle. Anki, The greetings were uh, performed by singing. It's sort of this uh, song contest broke out and she got a happy birthday song in 10 different languages. I just remember the feeling was, it was amazing. Uh, it saved the day. People were almost crying and, and, uh, and in a really good mood. So once again, the day got better than the one before. So. The theme for today, I'm happy that a lot of people have been asking us about our themes. That's good. So our theme for today is uh, libraries in rural areas. The day 7th was a quite long one, probably the hottest day. Uh, two more days and then we get to Berlin. And right now we are on Gustro and we are heading to Warren, it's 80 kilometers. And guess what? We are staying in wood in a tent, big tent. I think we're going to be going through some forest, which is always really nice uh, to have the shade from the sun so we don't get so tired. It was getting hotter and hotter, so I was starting to fear that people would get some heat strokes. But uh, everybody drank a lot of water and we had made these stops during the way so that they could drink, drink a lot, so. I'm still hurting here because I was playing yesterday and, and I you fall did. down and... You'd, oh yeah, you did. Uh, yeah, it's hurting here. <laughs> the ribs are at the back. Yeah, probably. <laughs> oh, that's a nice. sleep on that His side? ribs really started hurting because he, he sneezed at some point and just you know, fell on the ground and couldn't get up. And uh, he was just, you know, trembling because of the pain. So we had to say to him, he's sort of, uh, this, this sort of people in Finland that can't admit that they hurt. <laughs> Nukka is one of them. We had to say, say to him that you can't ride anymore because if he would sneeze uh, in the saddle and maybe fall down, it would, could be disastrous, so. But I guess it was, Maybe kind of hard for him because he's been planning this trip for so long. And then we have another 25 kilometers left until Bar and, and the camping place there. How are you going? Good to see you. Good to see yeah. you. Woo! Welcome in Bar. And if I think about this in a way as a kind of mobile camp of libraries, that that was the first first day when we actually kind of camped 
by sleeping on the ground and in sleeping bags and so on. Then we had to sleep in a, in a tent and there was a lot of mosquitoes there. Uh, so you had to you know, hide inside your sleeping bag. It, I, I think it was quite a rough night for everybody. Welcome, it's uh, today eight. <laughs> eight race? Yeah, some people did seem a little bit tired in the morning, but that's the way it goes when you cycle for a lab race. Uh, you have uh, 90 kilometers to ride. I won't be riding today. Like yesterday, for example, people odometer said over 90, yes. but the map said 75. Okay. <laughs> okay. So you know, so don't drive like this. I remember that was pretty tough riding, riding on gravel roads, going downhill in deep sand, in forests and lots kind of mosquitoes and, and really, really hot. I'm kind of wondering why we didn't have any heat strokes or so on, because I guess these people's, people are survivors, so. We were kind of late from Furstenberg and, and we knew that we had some kind of important arrangements there. I think it was the vice mayor or, or, or even mayor was there and he was supposed to greet us and we, were, we had said that we would be there at six o'clock and then in the beginning we said oh we can't make it to six we'll be there at eight. At some point we stopped to get some drinks and just looked at the clock and, and, uh, and realized that we're not going to make it. But then, uh, then we made the decision that some of the participants would uh, jump in cars and just ride there with cars uh, to get there in time, on time, uh, and the rest would just, you know, ride ride behind them uh, on bikes. And uh, I think we were there at half past eight or something. At first, to us will speak our major from Postberg on the Harbor. He is also a sponsor of our. Catering and finger food, thank you very much for all. If we had stopped there and just, you know, said that, okay, well, we can't make it, so just, let's just give up, then we would not have gotten to the reception, but, but not even to Berlin, probably. <laughs> but, but yeah, describes this whole event that you're not certain if you're going to make it, but still somehow you do. Also, you can draw parallels to libraries in that way, that even if you don't know what the outcome will be, you should do it. This is good for bicyclists, because we're so static in our shoulders. And we will be heading to Berlin, 120 kilometers. Some people's odometer said closer to 140. So today is a kind of special day. Have a good journey. Our average speed had really, really went up from the first days. So everyone was really pushing for it and, and kind of in the edge of their limit, but they knew that they didn't need to last any longer. They just needed to make it to Berlin. I think there's a lot of symbolism involved in this. When I was riding at, at the front and navigating, to me the road was the future. And cyclists cannot stop because the bike forms too and you need to move or the bicycle will fall. And I think it's the same for libraries. Each cross section is a decision we make. If we know where we're going, that will solve all our problems to choose the pathway, because we always choose the road that will lead us to where we're going. So if we have a long-term strategy and we know who we are and what we can achieve in a day, how many kilometers we can do, where we're going, what kind of roads we can ride. If we know ourselves and know our, where we want to be, decisions are easy. Let me stay here. I don't want to go home. When we started to get close to Berlin, I've never seen <laughs> that kind of mood in, in a library conference because it, were, it was very expecting and, and, uh, and you know, people were so near the finish. You know the cocktail stick, the television tower in, in Berlin, you know, like a long stick with a, like an olive in it. I remember when I saw that the first time, I was like, yes, we're there, Berlin, we're there. Arriving in Berlin absolutely was big. And I think people were quite exhausted. It was the end of something, something huge they've done. So they were crying, uh, hugging. It was sort of undescribable. When we were planning the nature of this trip, we didn't 
expect this kind of a response from people. What happened uh, was something that uh, just happened. We didn't do that, we didn't plan it, but people who were participating did that. We're here, come a long way and I have a lot of friends now, so that's so important. I don't think we stopped cycling that day. I, I think it's more like a, one of those stops that you take when you bike or when you, when you travel. It's one of those stops. Traveling doesn't stop. I think I'm definitely still on that ride. The, the, the world is changing uh, and libraries need to change. For libraries it's the same thing as we did. We have, you'd have to do something unexpected. You have to try. If we do create something as stupid in libraries, then we we can reach a destination that where we want to go. This kind of way of thinking and, and doing together will produce new uh, solutions quite soon, I think. Well, I think uh, now that we've done this cycling thing, we need maybe to take it one step further. Something even more crazy. So, see you next year. <laughs>